remember when he passed away, it was probably the first time I started writing lyrics. Me and one of my other friends got involved against five people, but me and my other mate went in jail. And he got stabbed and fucking, he passed away. Just to secure their growing up now. Cause it's a scary time to fucking have kids now. And so welcome to another episode of Narvin Herbert's Nothing But The Truth. We've got a, a worldwide grime sensation in the building, Mr. JK. Yeah, nice you wanted them board. intros, you know Marvin, man, smash it. Can we got try it, it's, it's <laughs> reality though, isn't it? Cause yeah. you're all over the place now, you're getting busy, you're growing. Uh, you got what three hundred and seven thousand followers, isn't yeah, it? Man, yeah. That's what I thought. What? What? What do you mean you want to follow? <laughs> Who's this guy? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. obviously I'm not into the music as I used to be. Yeah. So it's uh, it was it was an honour with the link we got through the family and the friends that were the both, mutuals. Yeah, yeah, the mutuals. Yeah, it was yeah, nice. Man. It was nice, and it was nice that the way we come together. It's mad the way you even come up in conversation around them. Like, I didn't know you was related to so-and-so. I just mentioned your podcast. I was like, you know, you know, it's Harry's cousin, and I was like, fuck off, like, no way. Like, yeah, man, that's, that's family, basically. Yeah, it's proper blood as well. Yeah, it's not man. like, it's not a street family. Yeah, man, it's family, family, family like, yeah. yeah, man. I'm like his dad, innit? I brought him up. Like, fucking was, mad cunt, you can tell. But, <laughs> but his, his mum and my mum was just, weren't the best parental guidance or support. Mm -hmm. So I, I had to mould him to survive, innit? So, I taught him what I knew best. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, sick. Um, just before we go on, at 12, 13 years of age, you used to get 10, 12 bits of food of grub to go and sell. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I used to give him half a bar of sniff of that. So yeah, go and give that to your pals. He'd be like, yeah, all right, cousin. And then the next week I'm like, right, where's your money? I've got a few double bits. fucking porn up now, uh, ain't Yeah. It? Well, he's, well, he's, he's found something that he enjoys and he finds something. He's just being around Charlie, them two are like, they're best friends, innit? And like, that's their, they need to be in Dubai, they need to be in Marbella, they need to be everywhere you get, man. That's yeah. their, can't explain, like they've done their family thing, secured everything, like Charlie's got his stuff set at home and that, and we're just fucking out here, living life, that's man. It, just, it's the dream, isn't it? It's what, what, what you work towards. What I can say about Charlie is this, yeah. He's one of the most creative men that I've ever come across. And I doubted him. I doubted him for years, yeah? And I used to say to Harry, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> He's a DJ, bruv. Because I'm flying grub, I'm doing all the bits and pieces. You can't see that. I never so, see yeah, it, I never see, see it. And he's, right, so you got Charlie on one side, me on the other. Well, I'm saying, cuz, listen, you've got to make dough. You've got to make dough. And Charlie's saying, no, you got to be with me. You got to do it this way. That's fucked, that's fucked, that's fucked. But like I said to Charlie um, not too long ago, I said, you know what? I really appreciate the fact that you went your way and done what you've done. Yeah, ever and since I've known Charlie, he's been with Harry. Yeah, like, but he's just seven, eight years ago yeah, when they're, they're still they're with just, each they're, other. They've yeah, been, even before then, before then, mate, when they done when they started the grimy limeys, like they used to do some crazy shit, like just video crackheads doing stuff, like for that as well. Yeah, I'd take that, do this, and they used to film them doing crazy stuff. And I used to say, always say to me, I said, "What the fuck are you hanging about with this guy for? What is he doing?" They were going viral before viral was even a I'm fucking thing. So I never see, I never see Charlie's vision back then, mm -hmm. and I always thought he was just holding my cousin back, and I never see what he was creating because he's such a creative individual. Yeah, you know? So it's only now, like I said to him, "Do you know what, Charlie? I can't believe it, man. I was fucking dumb." I wish I'd have jumped on board 10 years ago. I wish I'd have come on and done, because when they first started, he was like, Marv, man, come and do this, come and I was like, fuck that, what, what? I ain't going to do that, I was going to Yeah, because you're probably blind to it. They're probably trying to get you away from certain you things, know, and yeah, you're but, like fucking. No, I, got, I got offered loads of little positions with them growing up, man. I was like, what, do what? What, run around for that? Fuck off, I'm getting tons of this, half a ton of that, 300 bits of this, 30 bits of that. What am I running around with you for? Go, fuck off. Take hundred bits of them, take fifty bits of them, and like, no, we don't want it. I don't want it. We're good. We're good. We're good. Like we're doing this. I'm like, are you fucking mad? What? How are you making money, bro? You are getting certain amount of fuck that. So I was ignorant to all of it, and I, I took I, I took my half to Charlie, and I shook his hand, and I let him know that I was the fool, and I made the mistakes, and I wish I'd have listened a lot sooner. Fair and it's on. just now we well, I'm about to take off. Do you know what I mean? And they're going to help guide me through my well, you, It's in that world now. Like, not directly, you're not doing music, but it all falls under one platform. Yeah, yeah, all so on YouTube, one umbrella, all on yeah. fucking Instagram. So it's one, all one, the one, same one, thing. One, one umbrella. So let's just go back to the beginning and let's just talk about JK. Where did it all start with JK? Fuck yeah. How old are you now? 29. 29. Yeah, man. Sick. See, and that's like. The rocky years, probably one of the most. Is, 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 no, 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 the, I think I think eighteen to twenty four is the rocky years. Mm. I think once you get through eighty to twenty four, 
and you're where you need to be, then everything's all right. Do you know what I mean? Just like, the thought of being close to 30, you know? Yeah, you know but I mean? listen, it's, it's, it's 40 and 50 you've got to worry about. Because I'm just about to turn 50, yeah? And I don't even feel like my life started yet. Do you know what I mean? So I don't feel any younger than I did when I was 25, yeah, yeah, 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't use age as a, as a, as a sort of a benchmark of achievement because that's how you'll frustrate yourself. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. you started, where'd you come from? Birmingham. Small Leaf, Birmingham. Small Leaf, Birmingham. Yeah, yeah. Old uh, Tommy Selby's plot. Yeah, man. Yeah, Peaky Blinders. <laughs> Old oh, Peaky man. Blinders. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but you know what A lot of people don't realise how real the Peaky Blinders were. The, from pub, the garrison. We used to run the garrison. You yeah. know how many spare people got knocked out in the garrison? Yeah. Like, I've got stories in that pub. Like, it's mad. They talk about certain areas and that. Someone first put me onto it, I was thinking, no chance is there a thing set in small leaf. And then I watched it, I was like, fuck, you know, I couldn't believe it. But now you can see where the madness comes from. It's, yeah, because there's a thing called the BSA. And like when the world wars were happen, happening, we was like, all the guns was getting made in small heath. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we was getting bombed a lot because we was producing all the guns. So like there's bare little plots now in my area that are just blown out, like yeah. not ever been made. Because they was responsible for the guns and Liverpool was responsible for the ammunition. Did you yeah, know that? For, what was it, through ducks? Or? Yeah, no, no. Liverpool, they used to have all the ladies in Liverpool making ammunition. All that, that was like a secret location for all the ammo to be made. In Liverpool, BSA, the wars and that's, all that. that's where it was. I, I, that's I'm, I'm that's where the guns were made, man. But so you should just get hammered with fucking bombs, man. So what was your childhood like growing up? Um, first mom, memory, first memories. Moving to my second house, like where my where we grew up, basically. That's probably my earliest, like my fifth birthday around there. Yeah. And yeah. what was you like as a five year old? Uh I was probably relatively good. You know, yeah. Having a five-year-old now, yeah, I was definitely good. <laughs> yeah, I was definitely good, yeah. Because he's a little shit. But, um, yeah, I grew up with my mum, my sister, my nan. Okay. Dad weren't really around. He used to fucking, he sold a bit of gear, jumped on the gear. That's how the fucking story goes for a yeah, lot of people. Come on, it's, just, saying, yeah. it's just working class environments of underprivileged mindsets, really. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, it's just getting caught up in an environment uh, that just offers no real opportunities but education and because education was always viewed as a as a weakness mm -hmm. i mean going to college university Being a you know, geek buffing, yeah. Yeah. So it's we, we backwards was yeah. yeah but this one it's not backwards it's the way forward mm. right but we was always programmed that it wasn't the way forward <clears throat> I've, I've sort of realized now that that was the oldest way of massaging their egos by making themselves feel empowered and big by sort of recruiting young innocent minds into believing that this is the way of the world, mm. but thinking to know what, like for argument's sake. So where I'd ask, I was a kid, they'd go, ah, we need to do this, we need to go and get Marv, go and get Marv. Ah, oh, Marv will do it. Oh, he's offering this, offering that, Marv will do it, Marv yeah, will do it, yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? They come and say, oh, do you know the old one, what is doing? With who? I live having a problem with such and such. Who? What, such and such from such and such? I know them, they were fucking idiots, mate. They'll, go, well, they'll, they'll pay for that to get sorted, you know? I said, I'll do that for free. Come on, man. And uh, I just got manipulated. So that same mindset has been rippling from the beginning Throughout, of the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So five was, years of age. Yeah, he was like, my dad was like, my mum just left my dad, basically. And uh, he was like in and out of jail. He got done for, got done for a few things. He got done for like conspiracy for class A. Like there was importing shit and fucking... Yeah. He done that sentence and he's got like loads of other kids as well. I got like bare brothers fucking all over the world basically. I've only met like one of them. Yeah. Um but I was always aware, like my mum always let me know like you've got other brothers and things like that. She wasn't ever like my mum my dad wasn't good for us and wasn't around, but she was never like, Your dad's a piece of shit. Yeah, Do you know what I'm saying? Your dad. Yeah, like if you wanna see him you can. But I was mum's boy, so I was like, fuck that. And my sister's five years older than me, so she's got more memories and more attached to him, so my sister had a relationship with him when she was younger and I was more like my mum. I just wanted to be around my mum. And in fact, oh, that's a good thing though, really. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. You might not have been the man you are today. Yeah, without, man. You know, See, my mum was my mum and my dad. And my mum's tough, you know what I'm saying? Like, everyone knows who knows my mum. My mum's fucking, when she's ready, she can give it a go. You know, it's yeah, my mum's cool. mad, you get me? So, it's like, I wasn't like, it's not like I never had a man around me and I didn't know how to grow up as a man. Like, my mum taught me certain things growing up. Knowing like she's got to do it as a woman with a young boy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. so it was more like he was never around in and out. Yeah, then he fucking I think he moved to Scotland when I was around ten. Grafton. Uh, nah, more done then, you know. 
Yeah. Yeah, and then because I found that in in the eighties, nineties, a lot of people <laughs> went up to Scotland because the puff was worth three times even as now, much. Up there. Even today, bro, it's so, still, I mean the yeah, puff yeah. Was, went through the roof. Yeah, up there. it's a lot more expensive. And even there. the gear up there, the brand and all mm. that sort of stuff went through a lot more up there. So he, a lot of he was called my uncle. His younger brother passed away at twenty nine as well. Man, he was he used to be on gear and shit as well. So it was like fucking. It was sad, you know what I'm saying? Because that was my uncle and we looked up to him and he was the younger one. He had more energy and time for us and that, you get me? And then we seen him. More as not seeing my dad, like, what's the word? Go on a downward spiral. I remember it happening to my uncle though. Like, my uncle passed away. His heart stopped in his sleep or some shit yeah. like that. And then fuck him. Literally just like, me and my sister have been close my whole life. And then... When I was started about seven, eight years old, it's more so like kids now don't fucking go out, they're on their phones and yeah, yeah, yeah. we used to fucking boot doors off and fucking set fires and fireworks and fucking from young, you get me? Like we used Making to camps and just mad shit like everyone like being 10, year, 10, 11 years old, I'll say I'm stopping at Ty's house. Ty will say he's stopping at Chris's house and we're just on road at yeah, 11 years on. old all night, <laughs> seven in the morning freezing. freezing. Go <laughs> home and mum's like, what the fuck are you doing home at seven in the morning? Nah, it was really money left, like, it was really money What the fuck are you doing at home? Like, it was just mad little missions like that. And then, um, who's, who's the youngster who has had money on them? I was one of them. Yeah, yeah. You, you just have money in the corner pocket. I've always been like, like, there's a couple of the lads that we always knew, like some lads, I've got it a bit harder at home. Yeah. But it wasn't like, oh, you ain't got shit. It's like, we've always, we've, we've just put it all together. It's mm. the kitty, isn't it? Whatever the fuck, you got a fiver, you got a pound, it Absolutely. don't matter. But me growing up, there was always one kid. One kid done him, right? And we'd all be skint, and we'd all be moaning, we'd all be whinging, and then everyone would split up and go their own separate ways, and you'd be walking down with Donnie, and they'd go, are you hungry? And you go, oh, I'm fucking starving. He said, come, let's go to chip shop. You go, I ain't got no money. Yeah, man. And he pull out his little little five <laughs> yeah, or a little bit. Of food. Rah! Do you know what I mean? So there was always someone like that on my on my team. Do you know we what I'm always used to like fucking. We was always trying to like. We live by the football ground, so okay. like obviously we say, can we mind your car? Like the park up. We didn't mind no one. So we go back in your house when the game's done. You go out and collect. But if they didn't give us dough, we'd fucking smash the, the window or yeah, something. Yeah, you know, like that. Yeah, so yeah. he's always little fucking around. Like he's growing so it's up. Always like a little tear away. Always, mindset, yeah. yeah. And then um, where my mum lived at the top of the road was. Tyrone McDade, yeah, and he was like a few years older than me, and he was like the main man of the manor, like, still to this day, everyone like still will say like, Tyrone's the main guy from Small Eve, and he passed away when he was 21, so he didn't get to see where he would have took life, never seen him have children and things like that, but I was very close with him, so my relationship with him made the other olders be cool with me, yeah. so I always had that relationship with the older what was it? What was the age gap? About five, six years. Yeah. So me being cool with him and then him passing away and obviously the torch gets passed on. Yeah, the from, green light you know what I'm saying? The torch light, to, to certain man. And, but I've always been cool with everyone. Like if you've been in Small Leaf for the past 20 years, my part, you'll remember me as a little kid. Like I've, I'm still there. I go there every day now, bro. Like I have to, if I go shopping, I got to go Morrison Small Leaf or yeah. Asda Small Leaf. It's just because I fucking know what's in all. It's yeah, me, yeah. you get me? Like So just, just literally. And then I remember when he passed away, was probably the first time I started writing lyrics or just writing like to get shit off my chest and then making it rhyme and then it went through there and then we started clashing like just getting fucking like you're the best from Ballsy Green come we'll have it in the park and like, what age group was that? Like 15 like that's like towards the end of secondary school then so that's like just getting on birds and did you brush with the law in them stages? Um, like <clears throat> little fights and fucking so no we're hard graffiti and shit yeah, yeah, nah yeah, nah nah so your mum had a, a, a nice margin stick Cut, for you. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Because I was kind of scared, like, what would mum would do yeah. if I went home? No, because what is, you, you, you notice, right? Because I never had any boundaries or parameters. So I was allowed to go and do what I wanted. Mm -hmm. But there were certain kids that I hung about with that had to be at home. At certain and I used times, to be like, what are you scared like of your mum for? Yeah, yeah, what the yeah. fuck, man? It's yeah. your mum, innit? Come on, they like, no, nah, blah, blah, nah, I'm going home. Blah, yeah, blah, I was mom, definitely mom. one of them. Yeah, yeah, Because so, if, if it was time to, she'd beat me. You know what I'm saying? Thanks, yeah, mom, on a level, me. like if it was Trust time me, to man. vacuum holes, the vacuum, fucking <laughs> chili powder, fucking, I feel like you put your arms under your legs and hold your ears. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, try and do it, but I can't do it now. I'm not flexible enough, but just have us on mad shit, and which I'm grateful for now because yeah, she made in. us tough, like, and I was always a fat shit. So I was a big fat shit. So it's either I'm too big for everyone else to fight or I'm the one to pick on. Yeah. It was always, I was, it was that. It was always, I'm too big for everyone or I'm the fucking target. You get me? Yeah. So, we had fights, like, even my mates that I'm still close with now, like, some of my best mates now, 
I fucking had mad fights with him back That's in the day. That's always the way though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like my close friends, so it was more like fighting and scrapping and fucking phone robberies and fucking yeah, shit yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, it wasn't like nothing mad. And then, say when I was got to like 17, 18, my mum always used to say like, yo, you need like a plan B kind of thing. Like get a job or go fucking college and uni and shit like that. And after school, I was fucking done, man. Like I didn't wanna, I couldn't take authority from these people. Do you know what I'm saying? I used to think these fucking teachers were dickheads and that, so. They chat to me, I just tell them fuck off and that. Especially college, like it's not a surfing. They chat to you more like a, when you turn 16 and you go into education, you're treated more like an adult. And that yeah. was probably more of a thing for me. So <clears> I was like, fuck it. So I remember I had a fight in Matthew Bolton College. I was doing music production, but I just wanted to write and fucking spit lyrics thinking I'm gonna do music production and go and make songs in college, but really you gotta go and learn how to make beats. So for two weeks, I just sat there not doing fuck all, didn't know what I was doing. Got into a fight with some geezer, got kicked out, when another college got kicked out, when another college got kicked out. And I was just like, yo, I wanna do music, I wanna do music. But I remember my mum used to say like, I had a dream. I remember my mum told me this years before, like there was, I had a dream that your dad was watching you somewhere, like doing, you were some big famous geezer and he tried chatting to you and you told him to fuck off. Like she told me that like years before I ever started rapping, you get me? So there's something I wanted to do and I realised like I weren't good at rapping yet, but I was good at cussing. That's more Same like, thing, isn't it? I was good at cussing, so obviously we know these kids from the like some of them, most of them are older than me, like, but I know what your sister done. <laughs> and I know what your mum done, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> You was that fucking bastard. I was, yeah, I I was one of the yeah, I was that literally <laughs> wrong for years, you know. I was the cheeky like you you, you, you're not liberty yeah, like yeah, fucking okay. going in on people, but on camera, like YouTube's here now, MySpace yeah. is here, and well, you can watch these things. You get me? So, <clears throat> I remember I had a clash with one geezer, I made him cry, <laughs> put his shades on, he started bawling. Like, I went in really personal with him, and now thinking back now, I think I'd I'd never say if someone said that shit to me now, you fucking know, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna lose something so bad to you, but more than it was kiddie shit. So, I remember I made the one geezer cry, he was a few years older than me. And then it got around to like the main, one one of the main geezers from my manor, somehow he wanted to clash me because I was building a bit of a reputation. So I was like, come, come. And then he's come to the park and I've destroyed him like bad. I've gone in on his brother, his, his mom, his sister, everyone. But it's personal though. Like yeah, we're yeah, saying no, names and that. Like oh, man, we're from man. the manor. So we, we know shit about each other. And then fucking he pulled out a little fucking, a little strap. And it, it turned out to be some imitation thing. So when I found seeing that and realised it was bullshit, I've just played on it even more. Come then, you motherfucker. So that went viral years ago, but I'm still trying to go for him. If you're just watching the YouTube thing, but my mate was saying it's not real, it's not real. So I was like, fucking come then, come then, come then. And the video stopped. So that went viral years ago. So lo locally, I've always had a name as a rapper. Always. A cusser. Yeah. Yeah. Always. And then obviously, you start to learn the trade a bit more when you learn about studios and you learn about shit like that and you start watching what other people are doing and I just got more and more into it. That's it, that's yeah. it. And what was, uh, growing up, what was one of your lowest points that you bounced back from before you got into the music to make you stay focused on the music? Because I found in life, <clears throat> well, me personally, and the way I ask, the why I ask is because my trauma give me sort of the determination yeah. To push definitely harder. Do you know what I mean, like, I, I couldn't, I couldn't back down. I couldn't give up. I had to keep moving. So I wouldn't say it was at a young age. It was probably when I was twenty one, and my one of the kids that I was like rolling with all the time, and he was like four years younger than me. Depth's man Joshua, like that's his name. That's his thing there, bro. Like he's like, how can I explain, bro? Like he was my guy. You know Your what I'm saying? Extension. He was my like my younger guy. You yeah. know, like this is so what I'm champion. Of you, I'm yeah. championing this kid. Like yeah, this yeah, is yeah, my yeah. kid, and he got stabbed and fucking he passed away. And like literally from that to like, because the court case was mental for that. I got nicked in the court case because we started having it off in the court and that. Fucking that whole process there was a bit of a blur. When I'm firing the booth first time I met Charlie, that whole but I was lagging. What year was that? Drunk 2013. So I was just drunk for like maybe four or five months, literally like non-stop, pissed up every day. Now I think, the amount I can drink now, I'm a big guy, I can drink if I need to get it away. Like if I'm on a session, I can drink, but the amount we used to put away then, it makes me think, I can taste it still, it makes me feel sick, you get me? So we, I went on a bit of a mad spiral then. After the death? After the death, yeah. Oh, that's just dealing with the trauma, right? Yeah, and I think, like I only knew him for probably three years, but because he was so young and the circumstance it happened, and being young, I think you deal with death a bit more. 
especially for someone you relate to and being like round your yeah, age group and that like, fucking yeah, I've been there, I've been killed there, where you get me. My brother and my cousin died within months of each other and I ate the bowl, the drink, and I got nicked and I was away. And that's why I asked you about the lowest point because I've had a couple of low points in my life and this was one of them. So that was the start of your current. So I've got, I've, I've, I'm in jail, I'm nicked for a stupid argument and a fight with old Bill. And I'm in jail, but when I'm drinking so much, I'm in jail thinking, wow, like, fix up. Mm. They're not going to be proud of you. Mm. Like, you're, you're Marvin, you're supposed to be this, you're supposed to be that. How are you a fucking drunk and bum? How are you in here, like, on these stupid charges? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And then I sort of come out, fixed up, and started moving forward a little bit better. That was kind of like what happened with me. So I remember it was November the 9th, probably. It was my mate's birthday. Whatever weekend it would have fallen, we went out that night. Same things, bottles and fucking getting laggy. I think and my cousin died on November the 15th. We fucking. We, there's a shop called Mr. Egg in Birmingham. So if you go out in Birmingham, it's not there no more. But if you went out, you know the shop, Mr. Egg, shithole, don't eat there. You'd never fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> You'd never go near it, yeah? <laughs> shithole. But, um. My mate's saying, let's go here. And I'm saying, nah, let's go to the manor. Like, there's a f- food shop in the ends. Let's go eat there. But he was determined. I want to eat from this spot. So we've queued up. Got into a bit of an argument. Like, I'm chatting to a bird, but one geezer's trying to fucking cut block it. Like, fuck off. And that. like, what the fuck, mate? What's your problem when that? She's talking to me. Like, leave me alone. You get me? So he must have been with her or something. So me and I'm still chatting to her, chatting to her. And I can see he's getting his back up. And he come over. I'll never forget it, bro, yeah? You know, like them wrestling slaps on your chest. <laughs> Stinger, <laughs> and he had a box of Donner in his hand, yeah. And I just sent him one, sent him. Him and his Donners flew. His mates punched me from behind. <clears throat> so imagine me and one of my other friends got involved against five people, but me and my other mate went jail because we fucking went to town on him yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. So just sending people all over the chip shop, and then fucking got nicked for that like a month later. And then oh, uh, we went guilty a little bit after so I ended up going guilty for it and then we got um sent two of us got four of us got nicked two of us got sent to jail and then when I went to jail that was just like I was in 2014 was after my fire in the booth I just linked up with Skepta and started working with Skepta so things were going good for me but in the back of my head I knew I've got to deal with this situation kind of thing so I ended up going to jail fucking only for a few months but what was that like to be honest with you all right bro in the sense of I've never had no one was you known when you got in there? Yeah, to, to a certain extent. So you was accepted in there as being someone Obviously, important. there's some there's some heads in there that I knew that are already in there. Then there's obviously someone's phone and says, yo, if you see Jay in there, make sure he's good. You know him, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah. things like that, so. It does help. 100%, yeah, it 100%. Does help, does help. Especially being high profile, because yeah. you're just a story then. You can, I knocked out so-and-so in jail, yeah. or I've done this to him in jail. Yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. never had that touch with Lucky, very lucky, and never had that situation. But yeah, I wouldn't say it's luck, it's just breathing isn't it? it's, it's being just, who you are yeah. as well lucky i could be a dickhead and seen as a victim thank like, your mum for all that it could have been e- yeah man yeah that. man it could have been easy anyway to get me but luckily enough my cold is my best friend from fucking as long as i can remember since play center and done went secondary school with him first lads holiday with him done everything with him you know what i'm saying now we're in fucking jail together so the first few months i was with him and then i got sent to a cat day but when I've gone to a Cat D, my other mate is on a nine year sentence. He's on the last month of his thing on Cat D. So I went and spent a month with him as well. So it was like, home I wouldn't home. have spent a month, I wouldn't have gone and sit, like all the lads are waiting for him to hit road. But I've gone and spent the last month and a half with him while he's in jail. You get me like in Cat D as well, you yeah. know, it's to take the piss. You yeah. know what I'm saying, bro? I was eating Abu Zaid, I was eating Faraz, McDonald's, Nando's, anything you want, mate. Any liquor, bud, anything. We just had it, bro. So it was like the end last month for that for mm. me was like, it was nice because me and him fell out as well before he Quiet. got locked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah before yeah. he got locked. So when I went to his pad, I was walking around the jail like, do you know Lee? Do you know Lee? People were like, Lee, Lee, Lee. I was like, little Lee, the lock eye, he's in that pad over there. So I must have went and knocked on his door, built it up thinking, yo, what's he going to say when he sees me kind of thing? Went and knocked on his door and his, his pad mate was in there. He says, oh, he's in the kitchen, he's come back later. He's like, what's your name? I was like, don't worry. And I walked off. So he was like, yo, what's your name? Some geezer from Bradford, I almost bless him. Like, what's your name? I just kept it moving. Like, I, don't, I ain't gonna spoil it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna make him come back to the pad and someone say JK's there. Because he's gonna think, what the fuck? So I just waited till he got into his pad. When I knocked on his door, he's come to the pad. He's like, who is it? And I kept the thing shut. He opened the door, and it was me. And we hugged and just laughed. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck are you doing here? Kind of thing. And then I ended up getting out. It was on tag for like a, for like three weeks. And it took me to New Year's Eve. And I remember no one was in my house. I was living at my mum's. 
And um, the door must have knocked about two in the morning, but there was no one in. So I've just flew the blinds and looked, there was police outside. So I was thinking, fuck, they're going to tell me something bad's happened. Ran downstairs. But within opening the window and running downstairs, five seconds, bro. If, you, if I thought I was going back to jail, I'm fucking grabbing something, you know what I'm saying? I've just ran downstairs, opened the door. They're like, yep, yeah, really cool. I was like, for what? They're like, yeah, for what? They're like, come. For what? <laughs> for what? They're like, yo, come. So like, you breach your tag. But I never, it's some fuck up with the box. So I've had to go back and do 28 days and then literally on the 25th day my nan passed away Damn. and then I come out on her funeral my nan was a Muslim so you try and bury him as soon as possible yeah, yeah, yeah. so the day I come, I come out of jail in the morning literally straight to the mosque that's blessing though you know that isn't it it's in a way yeah but it was because she was trying to get me out but obviously you can only have them kind of visits if it's your mum or your son like immediate family is not your grandparents but I mean the blessing is getting out in time yeah to, that, to see 100% saying, yeah. but she was like I remember speaking to her, I got a scar on my hand, I punched through the fucking governor's window because I was saying to him, like, she's going to die. I need to get out and see her kind of thing. I'm not even meant to fucking be here, you get me? Like, you've got me for nothing. And then she passed away, ended up, got out on the day, went to her funeral. And then it was like, obviously, I've had two coming homes now. So the first coming home was like, yeah, Jay's home. And the second one was more like, oh, you are right, bro? And you are right? And it was just in like some fucking blur. And then th from the first time I got out, I slept with my ex. She's pregnant. So now it's like, poof, my nan's died, just got out of pen, fucking, I'm broke, I've got a fucking kid on the way. So for a couple months there, it was just yeah. shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know if I wanted a kid. I didn't know anything. I didn't know, like, I was just in some mad situation. And then I made a song, it's Too Fake, it's my biggest song to this day. Yeah. I put everything into that song, everything. Months it took me, like, I don't know what it was about this tune. I thought, this is going to be me coming back. And then... That tune come out, and I've I've never really had to do anything apart so from music. You ain't back since. No nah, man, that so was the, the trauma time. trauma set you free. Hundred percent. That's what I'm saying. It's Maybe you have to. Go, some people you have to go no, through. No, no, no. Some people, everybody. You go through things in That's life. That's what helps you grow. Yeah, man. Like, and it, it determines where you're gonna take it. Do you know what I'm saying? And yeah. I feel like you go without for so long to be rewarded in abundance in situations like that. Because it was times when I was doing music, trying to get off, where I was fucking broke and borrowing money off people. Even asking my mum if I had to, you know what I'm saying? Like, dickhead times, like, mm. got to put your pride down. Like, people asking, like, you got that dough and that. And I'm not that guy. But I'm that guy now. Like, I don't ask no one for shit back. A lot of my people <clears throat> might owe me something. I promise you, bro, I've never asked one of them. Like, if you come to me and say, yo, I ain't forgot about that, and I will ex appreciate that much, so much more. Because I'll just fucking forget and keep it moving. I'm not going to dwell about certain things. What's you know what I'm saying? What's signing you? Leo. Born leaders. The, uh, That's what they say. That's uh, what they say. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. fucking yeah, man. It's just that literally that whole say like a year and a half of my life kind of molded me, and I was like, obviously, I would have thought I was a man until I had my son. So I had my son in the August that year. Then you realise what being a man's about, right? Fucking man. Fucking man. You got to buy nappies, oh, food. Man. Even the minor shit, like something's running out and you just got to get to the other side of the cities to drop off that little thing. Yeah. Like, even that, like, just like, I can't just buy for myself no more. Like, I like to dress nice. I put my son in, not my dress son. Dresses, my son's me. He's like a miniature version of me, yeah. bro. Like, if I want to live how I want to live, I've got to go a lot harder kind of thing. Yeah. And it's music that luckily give me that break. If it weren't for that song, or if not me even we thinking. for that trauma. Yeah. And putting it all into that one song. Because even so. now that tune still streams mad for me. Silver, it sold over 200,000. Like it's my, end of like solo tune, that's my biggest single. That's it. Yeah, man. And where did you go from then? The main thing really is like, like doing music as from maybe 21 years old till about 25 years old. I was always like, look to like, you dickhead, what are you doing? Like what you're saying, like you couldn't see what's going on with Charlie and yeah, Harry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people can't see the vision. You know, are you still singing songs? And you're thinking, you motherfucker, singing what song? You know what I'm saying? Like, people don't respect it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, people don't get what you're doing. Yeah. So it was more like a, not disrespect, but a mug off. Like, if someone's it's asking about how things are going, you don't feel like it's genuine. You feel like it's to say, oh, well, you should lock it off then. You should be doing this kind of thing. So, and I come from a mixed Asian family. So it's hard to tell. I used to go to family fucking homes and they say, oh, I'd say I was still in uni and that. I've never been uni in my life, but I tell them I'm in uni because I never had the pride to say I'm a rapper. 
and um, this is my life. Well, Asian Indian. Yeah, no, Pakistani and Afghan. Pakistani, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I can't so tell you them. To, yeah, so you have to no, be saying, qualified. I can't tell them, but person. unless you're certified and you're doing this thing, really, you like get, now. Yeah, unless but now, now. Like, they all know. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They're proud and they all claim. You know what Give I'm saying? Me some like, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's different. But when you gotta tell them and you ain't got a pot to piss in, I'm a rapper. And uh, they've got businesses and you can come work for us and you yeah. can come do this. And I'm not doing that. I just want to be a rapper. It's hard to tell these people. So that's one of the nicest things, I think. Like changing a lot of people's perceptions, perceptions of what I was doing. And like them seeing now thinking he, he was on something, the little fucker, like he's done well. And obviously, like I've done like a tune with Ed Sheeran and Stormzy and H is on there as well. That's like, obviously when Ed Sheeran calls, it's fucking mental. So that was a moment. Sally now. Um, What's he like as a person, Ed? One of the wickedest geezers I've ever met, bro. Yeah, yeah man. Come brought into the man house. Never had no security. He took him to the pub. He's with one geezer, one of his mates, and he kept asking, You're right. So yeah, I'm just going for a fag. And like, you go outside, and I'm talking, there's 200 people outside this pub trying to get inside because he's in there shooting a video. And yeah. he'll go out to all of them, pictures, talking to them. Like, like so literally, like, down to work, money nice, runs. Yeah, man. Proper I'm nice. Yet to meet still yet still to checks meet on me, you know, like that. Like, I'll get a FaceTime, bang, he said, like, What's going on? Emails. Like, he always checks on me, asks about my kids. Like, even like fucking. My baby mum's birthday last August, not this August, just kind of one before, and he had a show in Leeds. I think it was 60,000 people. Yeah. Just him. That's like bigger than a festival, bro, just for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's mental. And um, it was her birthday, so I took her up there. We've met him. Surreal to her as well. Like, she knows I've done a tree with him, but obviously I brought her around it now, so she's thinking, what the fuck? You get me? So... And I must have told him when I first met him that thinking out aloud, if I ever get married, I'll play that song at my wedding. So he's he's still got that in his head, say six months down the line. He's on stage. I'm stood next to Gareth Southgate and fucking Lewis Capaldi. Yeah, I feel way out of place. I'm just standing with these mad people. And he's like, oh, um, who's got children in the, in the fucking place? And everyone's like, we got kids. And he's like, oh, my friend's come down from Birmingham this evening. And it's his, uh, it's his girlfriend's birthday. So they've all gone, ah. Oh, and he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, um, had to get babysitters and they've brought her down. So I just want to say this one's dedicated to JK and his missus. When their legs don't work like they used to. I've got, <laughs> I've got goosebumps, bro. I've looked at my missus, I'm just like, bro, Gareth Southgate is looking at me like, who the fuck? Why is he going so mad for? But I got it, you get me, bro. Like, you give man a shout out on stage. I was just like, it's surreal moments like that. I feel like manifesting things, bro. I promise you, there's so many things in my life that I've wanted to do or people I've wanted to meet and do a song with or cross paths with. I swear I've done it all, bro. Yeah. Like Mike Skinner from the streets, I grew up loving him. Like that was my guy. That's who I used to love. And now me and him are like that. I've supported him on two tours. Like I've done mad shit with him. Like That's we've sick. got a real relationship, you get me? Like I feel, and even Ed Sheeran, I was on Capital FM. Someone says to me, oh, if you could pick one person you would love to collab with, who would it be? And I said, Ed Sheeran. And then four days later, he fucking messaged me like, I just feel like when you do put that out there... It's coming as part of the universe. It is, it really is, mate. Man. Like a lot of things, even bad things, bro. That's everything I wished for as a kid. Even like. Yeah, even <laughs> bad things, bro. Like, even bad things, you might think, like you can't affirm bad things because they might come to life. Oh, I've affirmed like, everything. You know my what I'm shootings, saying? my stabbings, my sentences, the cutties, everything. I wanted it all. You've got a pretty good business brain then already, I've right? All I do, bro. Like It's all like, I want. Obviously, music's one avenue, and it's probably my most successful avenue, but I ain't performed since last February, so I ain't made no doll, really. I'm independent, luckily enough, so every month I do get my streams, but not like fucking, I can do a show half hour and get 10 grand. I ain't done that for a year. Do you know what I'm saying? So whereas I get my stream money come in, it's nice and things like that, but my lifestyle is expensive. Do you know what I'm saying? I look after a few people. Do you know what I'm saying? So this past year, I thought of avenues like, I've really got into, but I've always wanted to do boxing and I've had like a media company, Head Movement TV, like I've, I own that with my mates. Like he goes around, he does all the press conferences, he does all fucking camps, he goes around, but like IFL, like what Coogan does basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like I mean, on that, so for the past couple of years, but I've got more hands on with it now. And it's, it's good, man, like he's a local kid and everyone from the man who loves him. That's so it. yeah, man. Upwards and onwards, man. Yeah, man, he's got me behind him and he's, he's looked after, he's got, Fucking ten brothers is good. You know what I'm saying. So what's on the agenda for after the COVID come fit winds up? My album, you know. Yeah. Yeah, man. Like the past six months, I've probably been studio twice. And why is that? Just um, lack of mo motivation, bro. 
And like stopping at a point, like I've made like say 70% of my album and then stopped. And then it, to go back to studio weeks later and listen to that, it's hard to just feel the same way I did that day. Yeah. It's a lazy way of thinking about it because it is, it's, I'm still going to do it. Just when you're thinking more, of fuck. More, more integrity. It's in like when you get something lucky, build that shelf there, you get it half done, you think I'll do the rest tomorrow. Do you know what I'm saying? And yeah. you don't do the rest tomorrow, you might lose a screw or a thing and then you just fucked. You know what I'm saying, bruv? Like, it's more lazy approach towards it, but uh, I've just got my studio booked again from this Monday. I'm back until it's finished. And How long do you think it'll be before it's finished? I'm aiming to release in July. Yeah, and so I'd have to hand it. It's be, we'll, um, be done by February. And how many tracks is on the album? Mm, sitting at 12 at a minute. Yeah. So what's an average album consist of? How many tracks? Anything. Okay, so if it's 30 minutes or under, it's classed as an EP. So that's usually five, six songs. Okay. But you can only chart if you release six songs as an album. So if you release an EP with five songs, it won't get uh, qualified for the charting shit. So usually you put eight songs, make it 40 minutes and call it a mixtape or an album on it. Anything oh, between like 40, like 40 minutes like. to 60 minutes, anything up to an hour really. Some people go over and do more, but I want mine to be around an hour. Full listen through, man. But it's yeah. got everyone that I've ever fucking wanted. Like like people that I've been thinking about, I wanted to work with for years. I've got them on there now. Like, Bricky, bricky, it's bricky. mad, man. I want you to do a track with about me as well. I want you in a video, don't worry. I've got the best video ever for you, bro. <laughs> I already know what I want you in my video, already know, bro. Trust me. Yeah, because what I'm trying to do now, because I, I, I told someone about four years ago that I wanted to change the face of music, like the grime music, the street music, and get the kids, like, because if I, everyone's rapping about selling drugs, shooting people, stabbing people, robbing this and robbing that, right? But for what? For what? So you can get killed, so you can go to prison, so you can mm. do this. When I know, I know right now, my pal's sons, my pal's nephews, yeah, are doing businesses, and they're flying around in helicopters. They've got yachts, they've got big five-star things, they're driving around in 100 grand motors, and it's theirs. They're not yeah, borrowing yeah. it off their dad. Mm. So I know flossing the way these kids on the road that want to floss can be achieved with three to five years of graft. Do you know what I'm saying? You don't need to be stabbing, shooting, and killing. So I'm gonna start promoting the the benefits in grafting hard from school, college, or university, or getting into business, yeah, and working hard at something, staying committed, and achieving goals in a legitimate way. Yeah, because where 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 I come from, the same as similar landscapes you come from, where where we're programmed to believe, yeah, that you can't make it. But like I never believed until I was 40 years of age that you can make more money as a straight goer. As than a criminal, like because I wasn't programmed to believe. Like mm -hmm. I was always programmed. When you get when you're working, you want a salary. I never got told about exponential growth in a company. Bro, like, I didn't know about tax till a couple of years ago. That's something I you know what you I, teach you know, in you, school. Do you know what? I, do you know what? Do you know what I found out about <laughs> tax that made me laugh? Yeah, you only have to pay tax on profit. Yeah, and I thought, what? What do you mean? They said, well, it's only profit. So your expenses. It's not profit. It comes off it, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was like, say that again. And someone broke it down as well. I was like, what It's mad fuck? though. Like, I've done algebra for five years in school. I've never done algebra once in my life, bro. I've never had to use algebra. Teach kids about fucking tax, man, yeah. and finances. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, this is where I'm going to start. Because it's all good getting into it. Like, even me, when I start earning dough, I don't know about this shit. I ain't mm. got an accountant. I ain't got nothing. So I'm getting fucking tens of thousands of pounds and I'm spending it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you're fucked, mate. <laughs> then you realise, shit. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, it's, it's learning. It's all learning now, isn't it? Yeah, it's good, man. It's good. And it's, it's, it's only good. Learning being, the right way, though, right? And so it's, it's only good being like this and, like, giving it to the younger generation. Yeah. Like, I feel like if any kid from Birmingham comes to me and says, Jay, what should I do with this? There's been situations where kids haven't listened to me and now they're in some fucked up scenarios, bro. Where I'm saying, like, signing deals and yeah. you're just seeing messes and that. Where I've told you, do not fucking do that. And you've just seen the money and you thought, yeah, let me do it. And, and now you're in a listen. predicament. And there's some people where I've told them, yo, you should do that, you know, you should sign that one. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not just going to tell you, don't collect money. I'll tell you whatever your situation is and what kind of person you are. I'll tell you what, even if you don't like what, it. Yeah, most beneficial to Yeah, you. what's going to help you? Do you know what I'm saying? And I've learned the business through music. I have meetings with every label in fucking England and I only do it to entertain them. I ain't got no interest in signing shit. I just want you to make me glow. Oh, you think I'm worth that now? You said last year you'll sign me for that. So, oh, you'd sign that, sign for that a year ago. And you that will be fucking laughing at me now. Because a year later, you tripled it. 
Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm building my value. I'm understanding the game, man. And like, obviously, when I get to a point where I might want to chill out a bit and not do music, that's when I can embrace other people. Mm, well, I got I got a bit of information the other day from someone. They said that labels are a thing of the past now. Hundred percent. Because you don't even need a label. Hundred percent. No one needs labels. Now we can pay the label. Like my my what I do is I'm independent like fully, but I've got a distribution. So distribution now is the people that um like put your stuff on, up for sale basically, put it in playlisting, help you out a little bit. But it's the same, it's the same um, services as signing a record label. Right. So I can go and sign a record label now. I can go, so say it's 100 grand because it's easier to do for math. So you sign a 100 grand deal. You've got to make that 100 grand back. You're in debt, 100 grand. So until you make 100 grand, you're not in your profits. And then when you do get into your profits, it's 80% them most of the time, maybe 82, 83% them, and then between 15, 20% for yourself after you've grossed all your money Damn. back. So being independent and having distribution is, I'll pay you to do the job. Do you know what I'm saying? So I've got all the services of a major label, but I pay them to do it. You ain't give me a check and bump me. And what, what's the percentages on that? What do you give them? I is give that 15%? 16%. So I've got 84% of my shit. And 16% of them is to have a team of Warner Brother trained fucking people that yeah, know the yeah. game. They, they work for, it's a Warner Brother label, ADA. That's who I distribute through. So they know the game and they fucking put in for their percentage. Cause they know they're on the latter, they're on the smaller side. So they want to fucking go in for you. They try and get you as much playlists in as possible, and try and get you as much sales as possible. And so do you sign artists to yourself? No, nah. Because I feel like I'm not until I can stop doing it myself. I can't provide like I'm a rapper. I ain't gonna care about any other rapper apart from myself more than me. Do you know what I'm saying? So until I can give someone that energy, I'm, it's it's a bit unfair. And because I'm so fucking anti labels, I'd be a cunt to go and do that. Do you know? What I'm no, no, no. But see, see, see. I don't think... I release people's music, but I haven't got anyone into a contract situation. So I'll release someone's music and say, yo, whatever I've spent on it, I want back. But whatever you make on it, have it. I just want... I want to learn the business. So I know how to go through and, and market a song. Because I've done it with a few of my friends. But not on a contractual tip where I've <clears> given you this amount of money and then you owe me this amount of money. It's more just out of this experiment and do it. Uh, so where do you see yourself in five years' time? Five years' time, two albums deep. Fucking... Maybe another kid, man. I don't know, man. I got two kids, boy and a girl. You got two kids, yeah. Yeah, boy and a girl. Six, six, six. I was gonna say, if you got, you got definitely gonna have another. Yeah, there, another one, another one, maybe. Um, fucking, just. Wait, in five years, I'll be, I'll be thirty four, thirty five in five years. I just be in a position where whatever my kids want to do in life, they're fucking good. Like my son, he loves boxing. So you want to do boxing, you little shit. I'll show you boxing. I'll send you fucking all right. Be ready to go do boxing. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. more like that, like, just to secure their growing up now. Because it's a scary time to fucking have kids now. It's and, always and been scary to have kids, yeah, man. man. But it's just, you're, you're fortunate and blessed enough and you've got the work ethic and the parental input to actually become sustainable and teach your kids the greater things in life. Yeah. So... I had to learn all this sort of stuff and it's only now, the last four years, that I can actually apply some sort of normality to my children's lives. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like prior to that I was just, just on, just on, on nasty mind. shit, mate. Well I, mean? I feel though as well, like I seen uh, Puff Daddy say something like all the years are sacrificed away from birthdays and Christmases, because I have it like I might have a festival, my kids are born in the summer. I might be in fucking Greece or Napa or I be fair, do you know what I'm saying? So I gotta go earn a few grand. So there has been times where I might not be around, be around in situations that you want to be around for, but it's the sacrifice that you make to have, make them have an easier life. Well, uh, why don't you take them with you? No, you can't. But fucking it's a, me and my mum went together no more, so it's a date, bro. <laughs> it's a date, bro, man. Yeah. yeah. Sick. When he's older though, when he says I want to go, when my days rolling though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Like that's why even more so hands on. Like I can see him like. I'm not trying to shit my son he's for five year old he's fucking all right you know what i'm saying like he's got something about him so as long as he can take a punch we're on our way do you know what i'm saying like because yeah, yeah. a lot of kids might be able to look the part take them sparring first time get punched in the face break the heart yeah. they never want to go back bro they'll cry they'll never ever want to go back like to the gym punched in the face and I'll, it's just me messing with him so i'll have the pads on i'll just give him a little thing and he's dear like come like he keeps his hand up like everything like he's, he loves it man so if i'm on a path as well with ibrahim five years into his professional career fighting for British titles or whatever the fuck, you get me like, 
I'm going to build relationships with a lot of people along the way and you will be in a good position and if you want to do something like that. That's it. If you want to do music, do music. You know what How I'm saying? How old your daughter? She's, she's going to be two in July. <coughs> Terrible twos, yeah? Yeah, she's just getting into it now. Yeah, man. Go sick, away, sick. go away. She don't yeah, know yeah, she's funny, man. Yeah. yeah, man. So, five years time, two albums deep, kids on course, family on course, family relationship, your mum's all good. I love my mum, man. There we yeah, go. Man. Just built, just started speaking to my dad again as well. Oh, excellent. Yeah, well my done. son, my, grand, my granddad passed away December. So, was it December, November? Last month of the month before. And we went up there, and obviously my dad's youngest brother is one day older than me. So he's my uncle, but he's like my cousin, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I don't, yeah. I love him, but he's not my uncle. Yeah, yeah. You can't chat to me like a nephew, you know what I'm saying? But he loves saying that JK is my, my nephew, uncle, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, but me and him have got along. So he must have been watching my videos seven, eight years ago. And my dad's seen the thing, so that's, that's Jay, that's Jana. So my uncle's not realised that he's been a fan of JK. Not knowing that I'm his fucking nephew, basically. Damn. So my dad's clapped me on the screen uh. and says, that's Jay. So your mum's prediction come through too? It's fucking mental. So he's shouted me through there. And uh. I was thinking, oh, he only wants to know me because I'm JK. But now me and him, that's my, for him, his name is, me and him are close. That's my guy, you get me? And what's your relationship like with your dad now? It's literally, uh, it's just Facebook back and forth. I seen him at the funeral. So he got growing. to meet my son, finally. So you know growing. what I'm saying? Yeah, man. And when I seen him, like me and my dad and my granddad and my son, We've got a look, like we all look alike, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when I seen him next to my son, it nearly made me cry, bro, you know what I'm saying? Like, it does, it does, my it grievances does. with him shouldn't stop my son having a granddad, yeah, yeah, you know six, what I'm saying? Six, six. Do you know what, that's a powerful statement. You, know, that's, you know what, it's because it's just a lot of people, I've seen a lot of families break up. Children are meant to yeah. grow up and, and have it's grievances. Like, I fell out with one of my sisters yeah. and she don't let her kids speak to me no more. And it affected me and it still affects me, but I know it's going to affect them growing not having me in their life, do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because I could add a lot of mm -hmm. value to their life, mm -hmm. not financially, but knowledge, sort of anything, just being there for them yeah, and yeah, having yeah. you as an uncle and that. Yeah, yeah, like my on. sister's kids, my sister's got two kids as well, and they're six and five, so like the boy and a girl, so like same age as my son. So and he, their dad's not around, you know what I'm saying? Like mm. their dad isn't around at all. So he ain't been around. So got father figure. I look then. after them as well. Yeah. You get me? Like I had it with Harry. I was the same with Harry. Me and mm. I, but. Obviously, I programmed him for all the bad stuff. All the grass why he's off his head, My mate. nephew just boxed him. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's so all just, just get him, like, they have it now. My, nephews are, my nephew and my son, they're five. They'll have it. And I might see a shot go in, and I'll be like, oi, stop. And my son will be like, but we're not crying. Like, that's the level. If you yeah. see one of us crying, come and yeah, stop yeah, it, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. thing. You get me? Like, I swear, man, I've got two sick little lads around me. Like, I know when I, I raise them, if I can raise them how I want to raise them, especially like my nephew, I'm going to raise them like my own as well. Like, yeah. I know I'm going to have two good lads around me as well. You get me? Sick, sick. Yeah, man. Sick, well done, man. It's, well done. Done. it's, just, it's just nice hearing the, a refreshing mindset of someone that wants achievement without badness or ego. Do you know what I'm mm. saying? Because I speak to a lot of people, even the youngsters now, like, and they're just caught up with this madness and uh, the ego and... They want the car, they want the, they want everything fast, they want everything this, they want everything that, and they're not prepared to put any hard work in. But you just, want it all fast like that, but be, be prepared for it to go as fast as it comes then. But I just, what I'm in, not, in that life, I feel like legal money, <clears throat> I've had illegal money, but you spend illegal money. Like when you get legal though, you deal with it different. The and someone always making, told me. The point I was making is you seem like you have a great work ethic. Mm. So as long as you have a good work ethic and you're not scared of working, and putting the hours in, then you're gonna become successful and achieve goals. Whereas a lot of the kids on the road now, they just want it for nothing because yeah. they feel they're owed it because someone else has got it. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, an issue that a lot of the streets are facing now. So hopefully, I wanna to try to change the narrative with these youngsters, give them a different direction to go in and give them something else to rap about within the next five years. Anything you need help with, just help me as well. There you go, you heard it there, Trust from the horse's mouth. Fuck you, man. Nothing but the truth. Fuck you, man. Yeah, no, that's what it's all about though, man. What Come on, Jay. That's She's what it's the all fucking about. man, trust Come me. On. And we, do you know what, is it? And you know what? I asked him, do you want me to, do you want me to get have a word over with Darren G? What did he say, man? No, man. Just fucking leave him, bro. Just leave him. Leave man. him to fucking do what he's doing, he's bro. He's doing what he's doing. He's putting his message out there the way he wants to put it out there. I'll try it's to, up to you. Like if you retaliate, then you put yourself on. on I'm not. Look, the end of, what I learned. What I learned. And I don't mean retaliate physically. No, no, no just, 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 just blabbing on fucking YouTube. <clears throat> right, right. People that talk, I get these messages all day, every day, every day, every day. Every day. Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And think, well, do you know what? He's doing what he's doing his way. Like, he ain't been where I've been. He can't 
do what I'm doing. Like at the end of the day, I'm not in competition with him. I'm in competition with myself. I have to make myself a better version than the don't man even I was put yesterday. This in there. Yeah. No, no, yeah. no, put it. Yeah. it, it, it say, cause I've seen you say you don't even want to chat no, about him. We got to send now. him. We got to send him love and light. We got. I ain't angry with him. Like, do you understand? He's still learning. Like I'm still learning. So we just send him love and we send him light and just hopefully the light will shine on him one day and he will, the penny will drop because I've reached out to him because I felt his message was on the wrong frequency and he's attacked me Talk for the wrong way, Yeah, 100%. so obviously he'll understand in time that I've got no manners towards him. Do you know what I mean? I love every human being like my brother and sister and if, if, if they don't want to love me back, that's their choice. Mm. If he wants to abuse me, he can abuse me. Like, that's his choice. That, uh, that's up to him to do what he wants to do. My point um, is as well, it's not some like thing on YouTube facade that you reformed though. You <clears> actually, <throat> like, you just, you no, are bro. You, no, it's right. not on camera that you reformed. You no, actually but, are because on a positive and straight and what it is, is when, I've been through so much trauma, yeah, that when I got to the top of the ladder, yeah, I had to ask myself, what the fuck? I thought I was getting out of this shit. Like, what's it all about? Yeah. And I'm talking to the biggest, the biggest movers on the planet, mate. Now, it's not like small people who are trying. These people have been there for decades, bro. And I'm like, like why do, how'd you do this? And they're like, it's just how it is. And I think, wow. I, no disrespect to any of them, no disrespect to any of them, but I don't want to live that life forever. I don't yeah. want to be that guy. I was doing what I'd done to get out. I'd done everything I'd done. I went through all the pain, suffering, and, and the devastation. But do you know how most get people get out in your lifestyle, and which makes you even more gangster, bro? You only get out when you fucking rap, bro, and you ain't come out as a rap, bro. No. Do you know what I'm saying? But do you know what is, a lot of people come. No, a lot of people get out of that life and start living the other life with a label. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You ain't got the label, bro. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? Marvin Albert. You get what I'm saying? Nothing truth. but the fucking. Truth. <laughs> but what? You ain't got the but label. What? Bro. You ain't got the label. Yeah. A lot of people can get out of the life, bro. No, no everyone can get out. Of yeah, it. But everyone can get out. A lot of, of the time, you have a label, bro. A lot of the time. You what, know what I'm saying? What, what, what I've noticed, right, is that <clears throat> when I come out of that world. What I had to do, yeah, was be lonely mm. and be skin, right? Hardest thing to do, bro. And, and th that's what people have got to do. look. So when you're thinking about coming out of that world, you've just got to accept the fact that you're going to be lonely and you're going to be skin. Especially knowing how easy you could probably get fast cash if you but go, yeah, man. The point to that statement is this. When you're sitting in prison, doing 15 years to life or life recommended, yeah? You're lonely. And skin. And you're skin. Yeah, yeah. So you gotta ask yourself, do you wanna wait till you get in prison to be lonely? And, and to skin? figure this out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or yeah. listen to Marv, man, yeah, and just, no, don't be, don't be skin and fucking lonely in prison, yeah? With, you got no misses, you got no women, yeah? You got bare hungry men around you every day, Shit, yeah? food. So fucking, yeah. just go skin for a few yeah. months. You got a, a, a year, like, I spent three years working for free just to get it out there. And basically, the message that I went in the schools, the colleges, and the prisons with, it's just snowballed because I'm genuine. Yeah. And I don't like, I wouldn't wish my life on, anybody else. on my worst yeah, enemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't wish it on, I wouldn't, and it's not for my enemy, it's because I know what his family would have went through. Like, even my mum, I put something up in my mum the other day. <clears throat> When, 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 when I heard I got shot, I rang her up and said, Mum, please, yeah, don't worry, this is nothing, Mum, man. Come on, please, Mum, man. Like, Mum, I'm going to be all right. Please, Mum, don't drive yourself mad. I'm good, Mum. You don't even have to come out. Don't bother coming out here. I'm good, Mum. Trust me, yeah? Like, this is my life, Mum. It's mm -hmm. good. Like, it's, it's me. Mm -hmm. Come on. But I wouldn't wish this on... What I've been through, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy's family, on their friends, on their missus, on anybody. Do you know what I'm saying? So... That's why I do what I'm doing now, nothing but the truth, because at the end of the day, yeah, for what? Like, you're doing all this madness, you're handling all this money, you think you're making all these moves for the right reason, but at the end of the day, you gotta ask yourself, for what? Because 98, 99.5, 99.9% .9 of the time, I'd even go as far as say 99.9 .9 times, you're gonna have shooting, stabbing, murder, prison, you're going to have one of the four. You're going to have one of the four, and if you get really big, you're going to have to deal with all four mm -hmm. regularly, all year. It's not like uh, every now and then. It's every major parcel, people are getting stabbed and killed and people are going to prison because of you. So why would you want that? But like, that's what I don't get. Like, And the people at the top, they all want out. Mm. Every single, every person I know at the top wants out. And the biggest people at the top that I knew are out. Everybody's come out. Like, they're out, like, they're getting labelled and mud thrown at them, but they're out, they're not in it, they're doing other things, like, and 
Me personally, I think we've all got unique skills inside of us to achieve greatness. Mm -hmm. So achieve greatness. The statistics within crime is a failing statistic. It's statistic. It's not a statistic where you can say to yourself, I'm going to be all right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because <laughs> to get where you want to get to, yeah, you what become you, the no point and what you yeah then? you zero point one three percent and you have to have had some sort of traumatic trauma to achieve a goal. So everybody at the top, right now, I'm gonna put it out there because it's just a reality. They got hair loss, psoriasis, eczema, stuttering. Like, fuck, like I started for years, like because you're you're so traumatized by this shit. You can always hear like you get told like you appreciate your days at school because you never get days like them again. You when you're at school, you think fuck school. I never want to yeah. come back here again. But when you leave a couple of years later, you think yeah, I want to go back to school, man. And when you, even if you hit a hard time, man, when you hit them hard times, I feel like a lot of the people that my mum's met of my friends as well. You know the ones that she said fucking watch out for him. They've been the punch, you know. Yeah. Yeah, like it's like you, it's, you can't get better advice from off someone of your parents. Come on, man, listen to mum. Listen to your mum, mate. And if I, I would wish. I wish I'd have listened to a few people growing up, and I wish I'd have just took my dad's beatings, right, and just went to school, not stole, you know. But because I was from a criminal sort of background family, I just went the other way. Where my dad was beating me, he done what he done to me to prevent me going down his road, and I never saw that, and I hated him for that. But after he died, like. Old age pensioners that I've never even seen in my life come up to me talking so, to me. Do you know what I mean? It broke my heart. Yeah, and it really did break my heart. Like, I spoke about it today on the podcast earlier. And I got all emotional about it because sometimes the first time I speak about something that I haven't spoke about, it hits me. Do you of know what course, I mean? Do you know what I mean? Ah, yeah. oh, mate. And it was, it, was, it was heartbreaking to know that someone I was made to hate love me so much and so all he wanted was the best it's not the same me, relationship I mean? but even with me and my dad like I know I'm be this distant now and act so cold and that but if I ever get a phone call saying he's gone I'm going to think I had all these years right, to listen, fucking break right. the situation and I'm telling you that you will be sick because once he's gone you'll hear his side mm. from places you wouldn't have expected it and I've, I've learned that as a man because I know if I left my my kid's mum to just tell the kids, what she thinks yeah, of me, you know. they're gonna think I'm the biggest piece of shit ever. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. like, my, it's like my kids' mums. They're 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 caught up in a in a mindset in the in the 90s. It's like the 90s mindset, and I'm in the 21st century mindset. So I'm saying, so I've changed, I've developed, and I've become a different person than the man I used to be. Mm. But I'm still judged and ridiculed like the man I was. And I just think, wow, how could you say that? Like, how could you do this? So it's, it's something that the younger kids can take heed from because even yourself, making amends with your dad now before he passes, and he's gonna pass because everyone loses their parents, you know, and if you make it with him now, then your bond with your child will become 10 times stronger. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's mad how it all works because until my dad died, I've never asked my daddy's story, like, why did you go? And I've just heard, it'll come, it'll come. Here's this and here was that. Yeah, and now, like, I don't take my mum's word for truth because I do. Like, what my mum's told me, like, our lives were life and what he was on and things like that. I believe my mum, but I ain't heard him say, I've done it because of this. Yeah, but you, do know you know what I'm saying? He, I haven't, I ain't heard his uh, mindset whatever, in that. Whatever, in that, he, yeah, whatever, that. whatever he did do was trauma based. Do you understand? he done it through trauma. So whatever he went through was because of something that he actually experienced and gone through himself, which caused the trauma for him to react mm. in an unsupported negative way. He was on attempted murder charge for me before I was born. That's what I'm saying. He planked my mum in the ribs when she was like eight months pregnant. D. Mm. No, like, I've got questions that, you know what I'm saying? I've got They'll questions. Come. They'll come. You know what I'm saying? But I don't hate him no more. He won't ever hate, it was more like, just begrudge like yeah, uh, same, no, mum, 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 yeah, mum. I was, I was, like, I was like, my mum, you, yeah. you let my mum down, you yeah, let my mum yeah, down, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But, mm. Yeah, it's all good now. So it seems like you're in a fantastic place now. The relationship between your mum's insurmountable. The relationship between your dad's growing in a positive way. Your kids are amazing and heading towards greatness. So yeah, man. you've done a good job, man. You have you as well, job, you know, but look forward to see where you're going to take it. Come on, right? let's, just, let's just, all we can do, yeah, is become the better version of the man we are today, tomorrow. And every day we get a little bit better mm -hmm. and 
with the grace of the universe, we'll get to a place where we would have uh, amounted to greatness. And that's all I'm aiming for, do you know what I mean? I've always wanted to be great at something, and now I'm going to be a great human being, helping other people achieve greatness in their lives and become great human beings themselves. And with that, that's my driving force behind my sort of motivations to achievement, do you know mm. what I'm saying? And this, I feel responsible to do it, being through what I've been through. Because there ain't a lot of people that have been through what I've been through that can sit comfortably and say, listen. Not a lot of people that have been through <laughs> what you've been through that are honest enough to say either. Yeah. Some things you keep there, do you know what I'm saying, bro? Some but things you keep fear, there. Isn't it? That's just fear. Some things you keep there that you never be too, be pride or be whatever, you never let anyone know because it's weak, do you know what I'm saying? But no, it's perceived as weakness, but you, it's actually a strength. You go, like, James English done a ton of podcasts. But yours is, I've watched a lot of his stuff. Yours is the one that got me. Do you know what I'm saying? And I feel like, you, you know, like you're saying snowball effect now. Yeah. You've been going on there and being so honest. It's just, you're seeing other people like doing it now, being so freely like, I can talk about it. Whereas before I'd shield it away and not speak about this shit. You get me? Keep up, Marvin. Come on, man. Smashed it. And that's it. That's another Save episode on. with the Marvin Herbert, Nothing But The Truth, with JK in the building. Um, stay tuned. Um, Herbert.Marvin YouTube, follow me on Instagram, subscribe, like, and where's all your links and... Uh, JK I... YouTube, JK10 Instagram, JK10 on Twitter, um, album out this year. You know album out this year, and you'll be hearing some, you'll be seeing Marv on his videos. Million and we'll be, and we'll percent. Be, and we'll be, do, we'll million be doing percent. a track together. So we'll be doing a track together, that's what oh, we'll be doing. Thank you, man. My pleasure, thank man. Thanks for coming, thanks for spending the time. Sweet, and we'll have to do a part two yeah. in another couple of years. Yeah, man. Definitely. Yeah, man. Wicked.